that kindness and goodness must be a way of life towards one another. Oh boy, that's the tough one right there. Did you notice a trend in all of these characteristics of the group? That it all calls us to do it to one another? To demonstrate it to one another? We can't just say, I'm good and I have kindness. The Bible says no man is good. But in Christ, we can exhibit goodness. We can exhibit kindness. Ephesians 4 and 31 says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander. That's that body. Along with every form of mouth, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. See, Jesus said in Matthew 7, every good tree bears good fruit. If you are a good tree, you ought to be bearing good fruit. If you are a good branch, you ought to be bearing good fruit. Can somebody say amen? amen. There's no need for bad fruit to be on our branches. God has called us for a purpose. He's called us to serve this community. He's called us to make an impact. That is our mission. That is our vision. That's why we say we're building community and changing lives. The way we're going to build community, the way we're going to change lives is through goodness and kindness, through serving. And this servanthood means I'm going to sacrifice myself. This servanthood means I'm going to give up, yes, some of my time, my treasures and my talent. I'm going to give up myself in order to do God's will. Right. Somebody ought to be shouting right there. Amen. See, if we're planted by the rivers of life, and God is in us and around us and flowing through us, we have to bear fruit. Genuine kindness can be found in showing God's love to my neighbor. I need to do some good things for my neighbor. I need to be kind to my neighbor. I need to be ready to stop at a drop of a hat and help my brother or my sister out. Mamie Adams always went to a branch post office in her town because the postal employees there were friendly. She went there to buy stamps just before Christmas one year and the lines were particularly long and someone pointed out to her that there was no need to wait in line because there was a stamp machine in the line. Mamie said, I know, but the machine doesn't ask me about my arthritis. See, the machine doesn't show me kindness. The books don't show me love. And that's what God is trying to communicate through us, through his word. That we need to demonstrate kindness and goodness to one another. That's what's going to make it. You can tell your wife, I love you. Your husband, I love you. You can tell your neighbor, I love you. Oh, I care about you so much. But yet you don't pick up the phone to call them when they're down. Yet you don't pick them up. Or you don't give them your pocket and, and give out some financial aid when they're in trouble. Yet you don't go to them in their comfort in their, and comfort them when they're in their distress. See, that is what kindness and goodness is about. See, we have to understand that in this text, Jesus demonstrates what kindness and goodness is about. Look at Luke 10, a little closer. We can imitate God by engaging in loving acts of kindness with our neighbor. The story is they were asking him, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Luke 10 and 25. He says, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He says, love the Lord God with all your heart with all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind. We know this. And he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, wow, that's wonderful. Love your neighbor as yourself. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus told him this story. He said, there was a man, a Jew, who was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho. And, and of Jericho to Jerusalem. And when you're going down this road, it's a winding, meandering road. That means it's a lot of curves. A lot of places where you go, you can be attacked. 
And as he was going, he was attacked. And he was beat up. He was robbed. He was stripped of his clothing, left for dead. But then came the pious religious ones, sometimes like us, passing, and they saw him. He says, a Levite passed. And then a priest passed. But none of them stopped to see what was wrong with the man. They could see that he was in distress, but they wouldn't help the man. They moved to the other side. And I heard Martin Luther King say on this particular passage once, he said, perhaps they were thinking, what would happen to me if I stopped to help this man? Are the robbers still there? Maybe if I give up my time, then I'm going to miss my appointment. Maybe if I go help him, then it's going to cost me my life. Uh-oh. Maybe if I help him, it's going to cost me my funds and my resources. So in other words, I'm going to cross the other side. Now, I'm, I'm challenging us this morning. I'm going somewhere with this. Are we crossing the other side? When it comes to kindness and goodness, are we moving to the other side? Are we saying we don't have time to get involved? We don't have time to touch that person. We don't have time to reach out. I want to challenge us this morning to start reaching out. I want to challenge us to not cross the other side. Can you say amen, somebody? But then came a Samaritan. Now, the Samaritan was the enemy of the Jews. They had nothing to do with each other. But they, this Samaritan had compassion. This Samaritan had kindness. The Bible says that the Samaritan saw the man in distress who was stripped and he was bleeding. He was wounded because he was robbed. The Samaritan went over to him and he patched him up. He put him on his own donkey. He poured his oil on him. He poured his wine on him. In those days, you know, they carried wine just in case. Always have to have wine. <laughs> and so he, he poured that on him. But he said, listen, he pulled out his money. He said, I'm going to take you to the end. And when I take you to the end, I'm going to pay. And I'm going to leave money. And I'm going to tell the innkeeper, if you need more money, come see me. Now, how many of us can do that with one another? How many of us are willing to dig deep? How many of us are saying, hey, my brother and sister is in need. Let's pull together and let's help them out. My brother and sister needs help. I'm going to give them what I can. I'll pick them up if their car is not working. I'll go the extra mile. Yes, that means I'm going to have to get up early. Yes, I'm going to have to change my schedule. But that's all right. That's what loving and kindness and goodness is all about. I believe we face the same situations every day. And Jesus answered them in the end and he said, See, you have to understand, mere religious figures is not what I'm talking about. You have a, 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 a priest and a Sadducee and you had a Levite and you had all of these religious figures he was using in a description. But what he was talking about was someone who was willing to humble himself and say, I will do the will of Christ Jesus. And he told the man, he said, which one of the three, of the three do you think was the neighbor of the man who fell into the hands of the robber? The expert in the law replied, it is the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus finished up, he said, then go and do likewise. So which one is your neighbor? Because you know I'm always saying, look at your neighbor. That's a tradition we learned from years ago in church. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. But when you look at your neighbor, is this really your neighbor? Are you really treating this person as a neighbor? Would you die for the person sitting next to you? Would you surrender your life? Would you go in your pocket right now and give $100 to help them to pay their high phone bill? All right, I'm not talking to somebody. I didn't expect it to be that high. Oh, glory to the Lord. Uh, let me do the church cross that he calls on people. Look, I'm having trouble today. Uh, I just got my bill. It was 500 euros. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, what I'm trying to tell you is that we have to demonstrate this love and kindness. The question is, are you willing to lay down your life? You remember Martin Luther King Jr., who was a great civil rights leader, who did what we, who brought hope to our nation, and who did and demonstrated daily what we're talking about. You know, they tried to tell him, don't go down to Memphis. They said, don't go down to Memphis, it's too rough down there. 
And the day he got into Memphis, he even spoke on the 3rd of April and he went to the Church of God in Christ. And he went to Mason Temple and he says, I'm not fearing any man. Amen. He says, for my eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. Yes. Now listen, he said, you, you can tell me about threats of those who would kill me and those who would take my life. But I came here because the question is not what will happen to me if I come down to help the sanitation workers. That's what he was doing. But he said, the question is, what will happen to them if I don't stop to help them out? And so that's the question that I leave with you today is, are you willing to say what Martin Luther King said? He said, I have been to the mountaintop. And he said, the Lord said, I've seen the promised land. Yeah. He said, I may not get there with you, but I want you to know that we as a people will get to the promised land. And I think he was talking about something greater than he could even imagine. The promised land is when all people come together, no matter what color you are, no matter what ethnicity you are, to say that I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now he was talking about social change, but I want to talk about spiritual change. Come on. And the spiritual change is going to happen when you and I start eating the word of God. When you and I say, Lord, who am I in you? Where am I at in you, God? I need you to change me. I need you to wash me. I need you to purge from me, Lord, those things that are not of you. Oh, yes. So many times we as Christians are walking and doing the same things as the world. But I'm asking as we as Christians, are we ready to be kind to one another? Are we ready to let the fruit of God manifest in our lives? Are we ready to say, Lord, I'm going to help my brother and my sister in need? Are we ready to say, Lord, I'm going to give of myself? Lord, I'm ready to be a blessing. Lord, I'm ready to make a change in my life. And if you're writing this down, the last point I want to leave with you is that the fruit of the Spirit, this kindness and goodness, will only flow through faith, knowledge, and love. If we don't have the knowledge, if we don't have the love, if we don't have the faith, we cannot walk in the kindness of the Lord. Right. 2 Peter 1 and 7 says, we need to have brotherly kindness to one another. Peter 1 and 5, 2 Peter 1 and 5 says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. You see, saints, we have to start doing what we are proclaiming in worship. We have to start living what we are saying we are. Brother Tony sent me a message this week, and it came from the Family News and Focus, and it was a surprising statistic. 45% of Americans say they have a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. 45% say they have confessed their sins and accepted Christ as Savior, according to the Border Group. But even author George Border agrees that not all born again Christians are bearing fruit. What we find is that there is still a lot of superficial Christians. There are a lot of people who claim to be like Christ and do what they want to do. There are a lot of people who walk not after the spirit, but are walking after the flesh. But we 